Hello and welcome to my Europa Universalis 4 Let's Play of Castile Part 2. Um, I'm your host, Gamer Vince, and I will be taking you through the rest, <coughs> or a little bit more, of this game to see what else kind of comes up. Um, as I was watching the last video, um, I noticed, I, I realize now in hindsight why Portugal betrayed me. Um, and uh, broke our alliance. It's because I allied with Tlemcen. I didn't notice this, but I should have looked. Is Portugal has rivaled Tlemcen, um, which means that Portugal really doesn't like Tlemcen. And then I allied them, and then shortly thereafter they broke their alliance with me and went with Aragon. So it it, it definitely was a contributing factor. They may still have broken their alliance with me because they're allied to Aragon. I'm not really sure exactly what the order of things was, but I know it didn't help. And if it comes between Tlemcen and Portugal, I would definitely pick Portugal. Tlemcen's not that much of a threat, and Portugal I share a landmass with, and, you know, them being out with Aragon is a kind of a problem. But, yeah, so just wanted to let you know that that was a potential mistake I made last game. But that's okay. Um, so to start off with here, we are now out of a war. We can now send... Oh, my diplomats are busy. Now they're free. Um, notice that those two diplomats up there were, were busy. But we're going to go send an alliance offer to Austria. Uh, because we're really far away, they're not going to ask us to deal with much in the way of wars in, um, in Europe. Um, but if there was a war with France, we might get called in. Um, Austria, I think it's... Is it, they're still allied to France, so that's fine. I just really like having a powerful ally, and Austria is stupid powerful right now because of the Burgundian inheritance. So they started off as the most powerful nation. Probably the Ottomans are probably more powerful, but you know, as one of the most powerful nations in the world, and the Burgundian inheritance that just gave them all of this and parts there, just, uh, it made it even more powerful. So. You know. I am enjoying the fact, though, right now, that um, Aragon is at war with France, which is not going to do them any favors with Scotland and France. Yeah. Scotland and France, for some reason, start kind of start off as sort of allies. Yep. So we have an ally in Austria. We're going to send them a proposal for a royal marriage. No, we're not, because they just sent us one, and we're going to accept it. Royal marriages are good. All right, so we're going to split the stack, and... Oh, nope, still too big of a stack. We're going to have to do this manually. Uh, merge that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Select these guys. They're going to walk across, because we have ten transports. Um, it doesn't matter how many people there actually are, just how many units there are, and there may only be 5,000 units, uh, men, in these 10 units, but it's still 10 units, so we still need to split it up. Um, there's now few enough that we can just split it like that, that's fine, and please go to Sevilla, actually, because I know in Sevilla there's room for my army. All right. Um, so, yeah, things are going actually pretty well. We took Granada. We even took a, a province from Morocco, which, you know, they don't like that. But it gives us much greater control here of the Straits of Gibraltar. Um, and we've also, you know, got a peace now with Morocco for quite a while, so I'm not worried about them taking it back. At some point, Morocco will probably want to take it back, but, you know, cross the bridge when we get to it. Um... Just having a, a little bit of water here. It's hard work talking this much. Um, so, a couple of things. Now we are really low on administrative power. And we're going to be low on administrative power for a little bit. Because we're spending it on coring these provinces. It's, they're kind of, it's expensive in administrative power. Which is unfortunate. I'm going to core that as soon as it's done autosaving here. Yeah, we're going to core that. Uh, which is unfortunate 
because we want to go up in technology. Whenever you see this come up, that means you can go up in technology, which um, general advice I have for that is that if you have green numbers, you should do it. Um, so, yeah, military technologies. And um, so now we've gone up in military technology, which means that our units are just better. Got a couple of bonus effects here. <clears throat> um, if it's a zero, sure, you can go up if you can. If, it's, if this is a red number, in general, rule of thumb is probably don't want to do it. Um, as you know... Oh, we just lost a cardinal. <laughs> oh. Oh! So there's this event that allows you to steal other people's cardinals. And it seems that one of my cardinals was, sto uh, was stolen by Portugal. The jerk. So they've insulted us, so we have a Cassus Belly against them. Um, so, you know, we could do that. And they are at war with the Ottomans in Tunis. We could go to war with them. And... Uh, uh, but we currently have good relations, and we have a royal marriage with them, so it would actually, our our people would not like it. We would suffer a lot of stability loss. So it's not really worth it, and it's not really going to war, war, worth it um, to, to go to war for something like this. It gives you the option to. You get a Cassus Belly for free. Okay, there was an event there that uh, just happened, but it just was a bunch of trade effects. That's why I clicked OK. I realize I shouldn't, like, just off the hand, just click through events while I'm doing a Let's Play. I should explain what's going on. <laughs> I feel like that's kind of the point of a Let's Play. Um, yeah, that event, uh, what does it say, Salt Crisis? Got it. You know, I get to the point of where I make these split-second decisions now. Um, but, yeah, that was one that has just a trade effect. Um, and, you know what? Since we're now in Part 2... And we're currently just sitting around, twiddling our thumbs, waiting for stuff to core, and waiting for administrative power to go up and do some other stuff. Let's talk trade. So, if you're a first-time player, you're okay of just ignoring trade. Like, you're perfectly fine. Oh, actually, also, while I'm... You know, I want my armies to reinforce. And I kind of want these guys to be doing something while we're talking here. Yeah, protect the trade on Safi, like you were doing before. Uh, just stay nice together as a stack, because you're good and strong. Okay, so, um, trade. So you have merchants that can go get you money. The way to make them get you money is, the best way to do it is, um, you click on this trade view. And this will give you a totally different view of the world. It'll point out to you trade nodes, and, um trade places so there is now there is what is this sevilla yeah the s is kind of covered but it's a, a sevilla um which is a trade note here it's this basically in the straits of gibraltar there are arrows arrows flowing in make a trade node arrows flowing in make a trade node powerful arrows flowing out kind of tend to make it weak so the more arrows you have flowing in the better for the trade note, the more valuable the trade note. So what we're currently got is... Oh, these guys are transferring trade power. Okay, so there's two things you can do with trade power. Uh, or two things, sorry, that your merchants can do. They can do what's called transferring trade power, in which case they are going to be at a node... They basically... So I've currently got a merchant here transferring trade power to Sevilla. They're basically saying, like, you see... You see that, like, we've got influence here, but we're not really intending to use it. So we're going to move that influence downstream to have an effect here. So, basically, this guy here is just sending influence all the way down here to, uh, to Zavilla. So that's, that's, ni that's nice. That makes us more powerful here, and we're collecting here. So that's good. Um, and that's getting us, you know, some amount of money. Um, so he's transferring trade power. That's part of the reason why we're doing so well in Sevilla. And this other guy down here is doing the same. If you want to change what they're doing, you click on a trade node. Whoops. All right, this event is in the way. Let's quickly do this. Uh, conversion of the Moors. So this is a big event. Um, so we can do one of two things. So we can gain an Inquisitor, which is a level one. Um, 
and there's going to be a bunch of unrest. Oh, and they're forced to convert. The Moors turn to Morocco. Ugh. All right, so this has a bunch of effects. Most of it's local unrest, and we're going to kind of force them to convert immediately to Catholic. At least I'm pretty sure it's going to turn. It says forced conversion all over this thing, so I think that's what it is. Or we could be tolerant, and they won't turn um, Catholic, but we'll gain a stability. So uh, let's see. I think I had an... Uh, oh, no, we're currently doing this mission. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to do this. Because I think it's going to... Yeah, the religion... Yeah, yeah. I, I just noticed it says the religion changes to Catholic. Um, it's. I currently can't get them to change to Catholic any other way because my missionaries just aren't strong enough yet. They need some buffs. So yeah, I'm going to do this. Let us be rid of those we cannot trust. So we did that. They're now Catholic. Hooray! Which is good for us because, again, I think I've mentioned that you want your country to be all one religion. It doesn't really matter what that religion is. They all have their own benefits and buffs and their own way of doing things. Um, but you want it to be the same religion no matter what. So, there you go. Now then, back to trade. So, if you want to change what your merchants are doing, uh, you can click on a trade node, and you could do... Well, it should give you two options in, in most places. Uh, da, 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 let's say, let's click here. So you can do transfer trade power, or we can collect from trade. Collect from trade is basically you leverage what power you have to get a percentage of the of the money that is being generated there. If you hover over a trade node, like, see this trade node over here, the English Channel, is producing eight, there's eight ducats of, of money to be had here every month. Um, and that's because there is money, you see all these arrows coming into the English Channel? Those arrows coming in are providing 2.74 ducats. That's what the arrows coming in are providing. And you see all these orange provinces that are labeled English Channel? Those are producing 4.25 of money. So that's the local. And because there are only arrows flowing in and no arrows flowing out, there's no money going out of the English Channel. So the English Channel is very valuable. But also notice that there's no percentage here. That's because we have absolutely no influence in what happens in the English Channel. We do have an inference of what happens in Seville because we own provinces and, uh, yeah, mainly because we all own provinces. Um, and there's, there's only six ducats to be had here because there's actually money flowing out. Not much, but there's money flowing out. Um, <clears throat> and we're getting currently 47% of it. That's, that's the percentage we're sort of getting from this. Um, and the reason why this percentage, or why, why there's more, these guys are steering trade into here, meaning that they're making this a more valuable node and this a less valuable node by taking money and, you know, filtering in here. All you really need to know is that a merchant that is transferring trade power is, is making, wherever they're transferring trade power to, they're making more valuable. So make sure they transfer things to nodes that are valuable. Um, or, excuse me, to nodes that you have control in. Um, like, for instance, I only have 17% control here, but I have 47% here, so I can get a much bigger slice of the pie here. Um, so that said, so we're currently making 3.77 ducats from trade. Let's see if we can improve that. So a merchant can also collect from trade. So let's see if we take the Tunis guy. So the Tunis guy is only getting us 0.2 ducats to Sevilla. That's that's the that's the influence he has. So that's what's the Tunis guy is over here. So notice that there's 1.19 ducats coming out of here. Well, the uh, our Sevilla guy, the guy who's here, well he he's responsible for I believe 0.21 of that. So he's not helping us a whole lot. So we're gonna make him do collect from trade. So he's traveling there now. All right, let's just let him get there. Okay, so he's now he's collecting. Um, Apparently, Tunis was this. Oh, whoops! I made I sent the wrong guy. Sorry, I meant to send I meant to send this guy, and I took the Safi guy. But that's okay. 
Yeah, right. I went with Domingo. Right. I meant to take Hernando. So we'll we'll just we'll just do a good good old shuffle. No problem. All right. Let's let's give him a second. Oh, got to do an auto save. All right. Let's give him a second. Give him a couple of days to go return here, and then let's reevaluate. Oh, uh, we finished coring those provinces, which is good. Um, that means our overextension went down, so all those penalties are now gone. So that's great. All right, so things have changed slightly. Um, so our trade percentage here, notice that it's gone down because we're no longer transferring our trade power from here. Um, this number, for some reason, went up, not down, but that could be any number of reasons. Oh, I see Portugal. Oh, okay. So no, the reason why this number went up is because our merchant left and stopped transferring trade power, and a Portuguese guy took our place, I think. That's what's happened, and he's slightly better at it. <laughs> okay, so that's fine. That's great. Um, here, so now we're collecting from Sevilla, and hopefully that'll be made over our trade. Yeah, our trade now went up slightly, so it's more because our merchant is collecting from here. Now, we were getting money from here anyway, but our merchant's better at it. Um, so we're collecting 4.17 ducats from Sevilla, and lo and behold, that's how much we make from trade. Because this is the, we own the Sevilla market, so we're, I think we're collecting from here anyway. Um, but our merchant here makes it better. We, we're, we're better at collecting from here. Okay, so lesson to be learned here. And by the way, I still don't, I think this has become obvious in me talking about it. I don't actually really know the exact way trade works. I really don't. All I figured out is that percentages is sort of your influence, how much you can leverage your trade node here, send your merchants to places where you have large influence, and transfer power to nodes that where you have large influence. That's all you really need to know. It was a long-winded way of saying that. And I just so showed you to do that. Uh, but yeah, there's a trade I'm not super clear on, and I know that there's going to be people who know it much better than I. Um, but I've also noticed that it's not something you need to be well-versed in in order to do well. Ah, we can go up in, yep. So the first, when you go up in diplomatic technology, that gives you access to the first building that is actually worth something, which is the marketplace. And in fact, I think I'm going to build a marketplace right now. First, I'm going to do a mission. Convert Tangiers to Catholic. Well, that's not really an option right now. So... We now have one province that's not our religion. We had three, but an event converted those to Catholic. Tangiers is, is currently Sunni. Um, currently, it would take an infinite amount of time to convert them for these reasons. So, your base value for any conversion is 2%. That would be 2% per month. But, we don't like Sunnis. Um, Catholics apparently don't like Sunnis, so that's minus 2% right there. I believe that comes from, yeah, right here. Our tolerance of heathens is not good, so that's minus 2% right there. Um, so that would already put us at zero. But it makes matters worse. We don't accept their culture uh, here, which is Moroccan, I would guess. I don't know. I don't know exactly. Yeah, Moroccan. So we don't like Moroccan culture, so that makes it worse. And, uh, da, 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 let's see, and the development of this, uh, of this, uh, province is a little bit below average, so that makes it worse as well. Oh, the apparently con uh, coring Mor Moroccan places is also harder. I missed that bit. That's terrible. Um, so, yeah, so we really can't convert this. If this was higher, we could convert them, and then we should try. But currently can't, so we can't really worry about it. Um, another thing that I might as well warn you about in playing a Catholic nation. So, there's this reform desire. Um, so, you, might, you will do things, and other Catholic nations will do things that basically make Catholics question their faith. And if enough of that happens, which always does, if enough of that happens, this will get to 100%, and the Reformation will start. 
which is the Protestant Reformation. And notice that their Protestantism doesn't exist yet. Protestantism started in in Germany, um, you know, I think like in the 1500s. And that's about when it'll start here. Um, <clears throat> around the turn of the turn of the uh, century, you'll probably have to start dealing with a Reformation. As Castile, we don't really care. The Reformation is an HRE thing. Like, they're going to start popping up here. Um, Scandinavia tends to go Protestant, um, and they'll deal with it, and then they have to deal with heretics and maybe converting and all kinds of stuff. As Castile, as France, or as England, you know, over here, it'll stay firmly Catholic, and it doesn't really matter. Okay. Um, right. So that was a you know a bunch of other things that are part of EU4. None of that stuff, or rather the trade bit of it, it's not really important. The Reformation, you'll deal with it depending on who you are. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm not going to take this mission. My point in telling you that was that I'm not going to take this mission because I just can't succeed at it for a good long time. Um, if I could to see, uh, uh, succeed at it, I would make my missionaries even stronger, but as it stands now, it's no point. Okay, so I'm going to build a market because I just unlocked that, and I'm going to build it in Sevilla. So when you select buildings, it'll tell you what the benefit is. So building a market, like a market costs the same no matter where you build it. It'll always cost 100 ducats. So you want to pick provinces where they do the most good. So putting a ducat in uh, Galicia would only give me 0.9 trade power and it would give me 0.9 trade power. I'm pretty sure I've only got one node, but yeah, it would give me the Sevilla node. Like, depending on where you build it, like if I could for some reason build... Oh, if I take Navarra, that's part of the Bordeaux region. Um, so, you know, if I build a market here, it would affect the Bordeaux region. But, um, yeah, so notice that most of these numbers are low. Rule of thumb for me is that at about 2... It starts becoming, like, at plus two trade power, it starts becoming worth it to build a market. If you just have such an incredible amount of money, or if you've got, like, if you really want to be a trading superpower, you might want to do less than that. But most of these things aren't worth it. There's one place, though, that you may have noticed is super worth it, which is Sevilla itself. Uh, this this trade post, Sevilla, this is uh, it's called Sevilla for a reason. It's the Sevilla trade node because it's stationed in Sevilla. So it's no surprise that that's where we get a lot of influence. So we're definitely going to build one here. And that's going to cost me 100 ducats, but it should pay out in spades. And that'll take a year to build. Um, the reason also why Sevilla is so... Well, first of all, it's the center of trade. And it's also an estuary. Estuaries are good for trade. Um, when you take other... Uh, um, when you build other buildings... So two is sort of the breaking point for me where I'll build, uh, where I'll usually build markets. Um, it sort of depends. Um, other ones, uh, like for temples and workshops, which are the other, these are buildings that'll just straight up increase your ducat income. For me, the breaking point is 0 0.1, 0 0.1 ducat a month. That's pretty dang good. Um, and, you know, of course, the higher it is, the better. Um, and then all the upgraded buildings, like, for instance, so workshops, temples, and markets really just give you money. It's, it's all they really do. And, like, you know, markets give you trade power, but the reason to have trade power is to make money, so that's all you're really getting from these buildings. It's an investment. You're investing 100 ducats now to get benefit over time. And the same is true of temples and workshops. Um, temples... Uh, um, tend to be the most worthwhile, followed by workshops and markets are are the ones that you probably end up building the least, except in a couple of really vital places like Sevilla. Okay. So that's that's buildings discussed now because we've actually unlocked buildings, and uh, now we're really just going to wait. Um, this is a game where I know I mentioned this in the previous part. This is a game where sometimes you're just going to sit around and wait a little bit. Wait for your resources to accumulate to do something. Waiting for an opportune moment to strike. Like, for instance, if I was really looking to get into a war with Aragon, I might, you know, every now and again... So, first of all, I can check to see where who they, they're allied with Portugal and Florence. 
Okay, good to know. And they've also got a personal unit over Naples. That means if I fight Aragon, I'll probably have to fight all of them. But sometimes, like for instance in that war with France, Portugal might have been unwilling to go to war with um, with me or, uh, uh, to protect Aragon. So that's what these check marks are for. Like right now, they're going to totally accept. And Tlemen, Tlemcen and Navarra are not. I could bring in Austria. Um, but what my point was going to be is sometimes you just have to wait. Like, I gotta, uh, sometimes I'm waiting for Portugal. I might wait for Portugal to go into a war. And if Portugal is fighting a war, especially if it's a war they're losing, then I might every now and again just click on Aragon here, see what would happen if I declared war. And then might, this one might be a red X. And that's just like, well, Aragon, looks like you lost Portugal. Uh, looks like we're going to war. So... Yeah, sometimes you're just waiting around for something like an opportune moment. Um, yeah, right now we're uh, the main thing I'm waiting on is my administrative technology to go up. If I went to war with somebody and took a bunch of their provinces, I'd pretty much have to core them again. Either that or leave them as overextended, which is, you know, not great. Um, I think Portugal just finished their war. I see their army returning. Um, but... Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, the reason why I'm waiting for administrative technology is, or administrative monarchy points, is so I can start going up this administrative technology. So the next one's going to give me temples, which are good. They tend to be very profitable, money-wise. Um, but I also really want to get to my first national idea because I want to get exploration, because that's going to give me colonists, and it's also giving me the quest for the new world once I can start moving up here. Um, once I can unlock these ideas with my diplomatic points. Um, as I creep up here, I'm going to get a lot of colonies and I'm going to become very powerful because of it. So that's my goal. And as Castile, that should be kind of what you do. Um, oh, that just means... So I know red flags are supposed to be urgent, but all this means is expiring Cassus Belly. So they've insulted us, but it's only a reason to go to war for another couple of months. But I'm not really intending to use it, so that's not really urgent, so I'm just going to ignore it. Uh, you might have noticed, if you've been looking at my treasury, uh, that my income was negative for a good long while, for a couple of, couple of months there. That's because this army down here was reinforcing. Um, it was reinforcing very slowly with the men we were getting. Um, our advisor just died. We might replace him. Um, <clears throat> was it the administrative advisor? Because we need administrative power. Oh, okay, so we've got death of a merchant. Don't worry, your merchants don't actually die. Um, all that's going to happen is, is we can immediately get some ducats, which we don't really need. Or uh, we can... The By the way, theologian, artist, or philosopher... Those are advisors. So, but the 15 prestige is nice, so I'll take the 15 prestige. I will totally trade 56 ducats for 15 prestige. Because we actually have plenty of money. So now, now notice that they're done reinforcing. My money is going up quite. It, it, I went from negative to positive two. Um, oh. Oh. So, um... I'm going to have to apologize a little bit here. Ever since the Cossacks expansion came out for Euro Europa Universalis, there've been it's been a little bit glitchy for me. I don't know if this has been everybody's experience, but it's been a little bit glitchy for me. And one of the things that occasionally happens is, is that I lose user face elements, which is really bad. Because notice that there should be a window here that should allow me to recruit an advisor. If this happens to you, it is very easy to fix. Just save and exit the game. It's no problem. Um, and just, you know, restart restart the game and it'll be back. Since I'm currently doing a video, I'm not going to do that. And to be perfectly honest, I'm not really going to go much further with this. Um, simply because I think, I feel like I've showed... 
basically everything I kind of wanted to show. You know, and a little bit more. I even explained trade. Oh, actually, but before, one more thing uh, that I really want to talk about, which is rebels. So you may have noticed that there was, like, some stuff about rebels going on over here. Um, so you, if you get, so rebel factions, this is, this, the Moroccan separatists are currently at 20%. If they get to 100%, they will launch, and they will try, like, that would mean that an army of some kind would pop up in the provinces that have unrest, so in this case, Tangiers. So we have some kind of rebel faction pop up here, and they would occupy Tangiers and be like, give us back to Morocco. They're basically rebels, right? Um, and rebels can pop up for all kinds of reasons. Sometimes they'll pop religious rebels pop up like for instance if a large percentage of your um, nation is a different religion they'll pop up as rebels and demand that you can convert to their religion which can be a serious problem for people that are experiencing the protestant reformation um, and so they can demand all kinds of things so you can just let them... So the way to combat it is, again, with the local autonomy, like I mentioned last time, that gets rid of unrest. Um, you can also park your armies on top of the territory that has unrest. And if there's an army in a territory, it'll reduce unrest. Um, I guess they essentially keep peace, or they just scare rebels. Um, but, you know, so that's one thing you can do to reduce uh, unrest. The other thing is, so when you, so this says 20% Moroccan separatists. Well, what does that mean? Well, currently, there is a 6.5% chance of it increasing by 10% every month, which means that the next revolt will be in about 10.2 years. Ten po by the way, currently, the only reason why I have rebels at all is because Tangiers is not a core, and it's going to be a core in uh, less than a year. So these, Moro these Moroccan separatists are never going to fire because Tangiers is going to be a core and the overextension is going to be gone. So Tangiers is going to be nice and quiet. So these rebels are never going to fire. But let's say you are in a situation where rebels are going to fire or they'll, you know, they are going to do something. Well, you go under stability here and now you will have a little bit of stuff about rebels here. Rebels and possible rebels. So you have this little option here. So first of all, there's this bar here that says rebels break the country. Um, if the rebels are successful enough and occupy a large enough part of your country, they can enforce their demands, which changes on who they are. Moroccan separatists obviously want to be part of Morocco. So if the Moroccan separatists run amok in your country and you can't control them, you're just going to cede Tangiers to Morocco again and just lose that province. Um, before they break out, you can do handle them. And you can do a couple of things. You can accept their demands, which is see Tangiers to Morocco in this current case. So you can basically skip the bit where they go to war with you and win and just accept their demands right now. You can boost stability because the higher your stability is, um, it reduces unrest and it actually tells you that. Um, you can also do what's called harsh treatment where you can spend um, military monarchy points to uh, reduce reduce by 30% the um, their how high they are so you could take if they're like if they're 90% there like the Moroccan separatists are sitting at 90% they're about to fire and I am just not ready to handle them right now I could do harsh treatment spend a couple of points which depends on how bad things are but spend a couple of monarchy points and it'll reduce their percentage by 30 it's not going to prevent them from firing. It'll only delay it, but it could be essential. Um, other things you can help to quell unrest is make it a core, which we're already doing. We can send it. We can send a missionary to make them our uh, to make them our religion, because being of a different religion causes them unrest. Uh, we currently can't succeed at that, and we're also core, currently coring it. So can't even start that or we could change the culture in tangiers we could try to culturally influence it to be more like castile to be a spanish culture or i guess castilian actually i'm not even sure what my culture andalusian andalusian culture leonese castilian no castilian culture we we would make them castilian culture um which costs a lot of diplomatic points 
usually nine times out of ten it's not worth it to change culture because it's very expensive but if you have a lot of diplo points flying around why not um, so that's what you can do to handle rebels usually I increase local autonomy in provinces I've recently taken and uh, if things are really bad I'll increase local autonomy in other places but only if it's really bad um, and I'll park armies on top of them for, to reduce unrest after that rebels having a rebel uprising once in a while is really fine you don't need to worry about it like these Moroccan separatists I wouldn't be worried at all if they fired because I could handle them I'm not at war right now my army isn't busy it would cost me some manpower because you'd get into a fight uh, but yeah usually uh, you're the armies the rebels that pop up in your country are pretty much related to the size of your country which means that since my since my force limit modifier is 31 right now rebel factions are going to be somewhere between 10 and 20 it's going to be much less than your army force limit is what I'm trying to get at you're never going to have a single rebel uprising that is bigger than your country unless it's some kind of mandated event or something like that in general it just doesn't happen that said though multiple uprising at once can quickly overwhelm you one uprising no problem an uprising doing a war that's bad multiple uprising that's that can really break a country and that's when you need to start worrying um, also you'll get a lot of uprisings if you ever get to what's called a disaster it'll warn you if a disaster is coming but disasters are really bad and once one has started they're usually take some doing to undo but they'll tell you stuff like for instance a peasants war uh, we need stability less than zero we need a manpower level less than 25 which is actually true um, and we have no current disasters so notice this peasants war could actually fire right now if we were at minus one stability um, or it could start to fire which would be bad because then we'd have a bunch of peasants uprising because we've killed all their sons and fathers so they'd be really annoyed at us and rise up and that would be bad and there's all these other disasters that could happen uh, don't worry the game warns you if you're getting close to a disaster um, yeah but that's that's all you have to worry about when it comes to rebels and that kind of thing um, you know what there's prob there's not really much more that I can show so I know this is a let's play um, but you know I feel like I feel like I have shown this is the tutorial let's play you know a tutorial let's play and I can't really show much more um, I could show colonizing um, and I might do that in a future video. Um, but colonizing is very, very simple. All you have to do is click on a province that is currently unclaimed. So right now we can't see any. But as we go up in um, in this idea tree, like once we get it, the, con the quest for the new world allows you to get explorers and conquistadors, which basically e explore. You without that technology without that idea you cannot go into this terra incognita with that idea you can and you can find new places that are untake that are not taken literally just click on the province and click send colonist and a colonist will go there you will have natives rise up occasionally so you should also send an army there but natives tend to be at much 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 lower technology than you so they're not much of a problem um, so colonizing is actually very simple but yeah there's not much more I can show in this game I showed you how to make alliances I showed you how to win a war how to make peace um, so yeah I feel like I've really covered the basics now and I've given you've got everything you need to succeed at the game of Europa Universalis 4 but that said there's actually still some stuff um, that that is that you can still explore like for instance how to do subjects um, you know how you know if you get a vassal what do you do with that um, and there's other mechanics like for instance the HRE 
dealing with the HRE, the Holy Roman Empire, is quite difficult, and that's a whole thing on its own. Or, for instance, if you have different government forms, um, like, for instance, England starts with a parliament. Um, notice I'm losing more and more user face elements. Now I'm missing the window. Ah, paradox, fix this! Um, but what I was trying to say is that if you have different government forms, like different countries have different things to deal with. If you have different religions, they work differently. Like, for instance, I got the papacy as a Catholic, but if you're Orthodox, you have this thing called patriarchy. Um, and, you know, different... And if you're Protestant, if you're part of the... Pro if you turn Protestant the Protestant formation, they work totally differently. So there's still a lot, a lot of stuff to explore. Not necessarily with Castile, but definitely with some other countries you could get a lot of other stuff. Okay. But you have the tools, so go forth and explore this wonderful, wonderful game. So, thanks for watching. Um, I'm going to end this Castilian Let's Play right here, but I'll keep the save on file. If I'm feeling like I want to do some exploration or want to continue this, I might do so in the future. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, and I hope it's been helpful, and I hope that this is, you know, clears up some things for some people, um, because I know I've, I had a hard time learning this game but it was so very worth it. So, again, thanks for watching, and see you guys next time.